Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome to the official Dram Association unbottling of That Boutique Whiskey Company's Whitlaw Batch 1. 15 years aged. All right, this is 49.7% ABV and is bottle 504 of 979. So again, a small batch, really interesting label going on here. There's clothes hanging from a tree. Uh, someone's throwing a pair of bloomers into a tree. It seems to be a priest. Um, there's a bunch of people, some of them with like passes like they're at a festival or something around their necks, uh, a lot of them wearing the same blue polo shirt, in an old abandoned castle, I think, maybe? And then there's a balloon with a goatee. There's a balloon with a face and a goatee. There's a lot going on on this label. I don't know where to start, but let's see what the uh, official notes from the Boutique Whiskey Company have to tell us about it. Alrighty, our first batch under the Whitlaw label is a 15-year-old, a release of just, it says 774, is that what I said? It says 979. I think they might have uh, printed the labels um, and then realised that they don't actually have as much as they thought they did. That actually happens a surprisingly large amount, so it's probably actually only 774. Um, I, I say that because I've worked with several distilleries helping them make labels and it's quite often that they make the label and then by the time the labels are printed they bottle the whiskey and they actually have far fewer bottles than they thought. Um, so let's go with 774. Um, there are not too many Highland Islands with distilleries older than 15 years old. According to the Scottish Whiskey Association all islands except Isla are within the Highlands region. Can we tell which one it is? Well, it actually doesn't say on the label that it's an island whiskey, funnily enough, but it's it's giving us that clue, at least. Fair enough. The Isle of Arran now boasts two distilleries. Loch Ransa, previously known as Arran Distillery, was joined by Lag in 2019. The Isle of Jura, accessible only via Isla, has just one distillery, funnily enough, named Jura. Uh, it was reborn in 1963. The Isle of Mull has a single distillery in Tobermory, but two distinct styles are made there. Over on the Isle of Skye, there's Talisca Distillery that's been making whiskey legally, at least, since 1830. Whiskey production didn't start at the new Torveig Distillery until 2017. Then in Orkney, there's two distilleries, Scapa and Highland Park. There are now distilleries on Rasse, Isle of Harris, and the Isle of Lewis as well. Are you feeling lucky? Well, about the label. Another single malt from an unidentified Highland Island distillery. But wait a minute, haven't we seen this label before? The Whitlaw name has been associated with Highland Park in the past, and so our Whitlaw label is very similar to our Highland Park label. Almost identical for some reason. So it seems to me like they got some casts of Highland Park that came with no strings attached, could bottle them as Highland Park, and now they've got some casts of Highland Park where they're legally not allowed to say that it's Highland Park, so they put it in a bottle that looks exactly the same as their Highland Park. Sneaky. <laughs> Ah, uh, good stuff. Uh, yeah, we've got a 15-year-old Highland Park on our hands right here, and uh, that is always something to celebrate, and I can't wait to try it. Love a good Highland Park. I'm expecting some nice light peat. Ooh. It's a nice light colour as well, so it's probably bourbon cask. I like that in a Highland Park. I like the sherry cask ones, but you don't taste the Highland Parkiness as much. Very good. All right. Ooh, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That is Werther's Originals with a tiniest hint of, what is that? Is that mint? Not quite. It's like a menthol cigarette. I think that's what that is. And um, black licorice toffees. Um, oh, what's that brand of toffee that, that has the licorice toffee? It's pitch black. It's really, really good. Um, ah, it'll come to me. Oh, that is really quite pleasant on the nose. A much deeper, darker aroma than you'd expect from such a light color in the glass. Mmm. This. Mmm. So, if you've been watching the Dram Association Instagram in the last uh, last week or so, 
for uh, Thanksgiving over here in Canada, I made some um, Athol Bros, which is kind of like homemade Baileys, um, but Scottish and made with uh, oat bros, which is like um, oats in like so soaked in water for 24 hours, and then you take the, the oat water out and mix it with cream and whiskey and honey. This is this tastes like a really much better than mine Athol Bros. <laughs> mine was good, mind you, but this, oh. Some nice warming spices on there as well, but yeah, it's just big, creamy, rich. Mmm. Yeah, this is very excellent. I'm gonna say 100% bourbon cask. It's rich, vanilla, creamy. It's really, really good. You can still taste the Highland Park there's a nice, really soft, gentle smoke. There's hardly any smoke to it, to be honest. In fact, yeah, no, this isn't a scapper. It's definitely a Highland Park. Mm. They said it's a Highland Park. It's definitely a Highland Park. Um, yeah, really, mm, quite something. Quite something indeed. And if a 15-year-old small batch independently bottled Highland Park sounds like a good idea to you, um, there might be some available still online. Full price, $212.96, and the, with your 10% Dram Association discount, because this is a featured whiskey this week, it is $191.66. So sub 200 bucks for a 15-year-old Highland Park. I mean... Highland Park Fire was the last 15-year-old Highland Park I remember seeing, and that was 460 somewhere, I think, somewhere around there. So that's pretty good, <laughs> I have to say. Aside from, of course, the regular edition Highland Park uh, 15, which is nowhere near as good as this, to be frank. Mm. Very pleasant. Um, batch one of the Whitlaw. Grab it while you can. Slash of I'll see you at the next one.